Hello and welcome back to the lab. On the bench today is something that's actually out of my personal past. This isn't a new or acquired item that uh, hit the bench from the user rule locations or anything like that. This happens to be the component stereo that my parents purchased before I was around and they've kept it all these years and it has never seen a technician, it's never seen a workbench. It's about due for some service. Uh, what I know about this so far is I know I have some dial light problems. I know I have some backlighting. Uh, the, the dial lights in the radio died long ago. I think the power display is good on the power amp. I'm not sure if these lights are good on the preamp. There's also a tuner that goes on top of this that they've been having problems for a while. I've looked at the tuner once and... I know the power transformer is actually weak on the tuner, but uh, that's about it. I've started cleaning a little bit, just cleaning the unit up, waiting for the power amp to come up. And uh, you can see it's been well used. There's some finger juice on the on switches. I've already cleaned these off. I still got to clean this knob, and I cleaned the volume knob already. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear these down. We're going to clean up. I'm going to clean up all the switches, get all the stuff cleaned up, see about fixing the dial lights, upgrading them to LEDs on the tuner, doing alignment on the tuner. Uh, having to do the alignment on this tuner is the whole reason I actually bought the 8657. So we have what we need to do to do an alignment on the tuner, uh, check the preamp, make sure it's working okay. I will probably recap some stuff in the power amp given that they're 70s era capacitors and they're pushing uh, over 40 years at this point. Uh, we'll also do some harmonic testing on the power amplifier, make sure we don't have any problems there. But yeah, just get just get this serviced up so it'll, it'll uh, my parents can use it again. This has been my mom's favorite radio. She uh, She's never liked anything else. So if we can get this back to her, that would be... Uh, That'd be awesome. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. So there's also a turntable that goes on top of this. So I'm going to be working on getting that up and repaired too. And once all the units are fixed, I'll take that back down to my parents and uh, we'll get it back to them. I will probably split all of these into their own video. Just when we take a look inside of them, things like that. Uh, do the power amp, then the tuner, and then the preamp. Yeah, that's about all I got. So We'll get into it. We'll take a look at the uh, power amp first. Okay, I am ready to take the lid off. We'll see what we're dealing with in here. To get to get into one of these amplifiers, uh, these fins on the side make it really heavy. Um, this bottom plate is six screws, and then it comes off. The top plate is a screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, and then it just lifts off like that. All right, so what do we have? Um, got some big DC filters, rectifiers. It looks like these are these are uh, independent channels because I have two full bridge rectifiers, two giant transformers. So not much in here, which is good because this is just a this is just a uh, set gain power amplifier, the adjustments in the preamp on this system, the volume adjustments. So I think I want to change out these let's see, eight, ten, these 12 caps. I don't like the way these orange ones are looking. Um, they look, uh, this one has definitely gotten hot. So I can tell the heat shrink has pulled back on the capacitor. So this has gotten warm. Um, these look okay, but they look like they've gotten a little warm too, so, but there's also a lot of very high power resistors that are in here, but I'm, un I'm not seeing, there's one green electrolytic down here that, uh, looks like it might need, need some attention, but all in all, not a ton of stuff we need to service in here to get the power amp up and running, so. That is really cool. Well, it seems my suppliers have other plans. I uh, had to get the tuner back out because um, I ordered the caps for the 
power amp, and they're not going to be here till September. So I'll work on the dial lights for the tuner. We'll see what we can get working there, and then I'll bring you guys back. All right. I've got the front face put back on the HK710 after giving it a good deep cleaning, getting all the 40 years of finger juice off of it. I have a service manual with test points. So I'm ready to start the alignment. Uh, gear I'm using for this alignment is my HP 8657A, my 7603. I have the 6510 hooked up, but I don't have um, I don't have a VTVM. So I'm gonna try to do it with the 6510. We'll see what happens. But I need to hook the 6510 up. First test point is R. 272. Got the scope hooked up now. Let me get the meter hooked up real quick. I have the tuner set to just a quiet portion of the band, which is what was requested. Or needed by the service manual. Okay, so first adjustment. So you guys can see the meter and the scope. We want T... 251, 252, and 253, these three transformers for maximum undistorted sensitivity is what we're going for. That's about all I'm going to get out of that. All right, let's check T252. No. A little bit more. Starting to see 37. There we go. T two fifty three. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was getting four eight for a second. There we go. Okay, I've got everything moved to the output jacks, and I need to adjust L252 now, and TC252. Uh, L252 is for 540, TC252 is for 1600. So we're tuning the oscillator for top and bottom of the band. And we're just looking for maximum output. Right there. And we roll this up to 1600. Just about right there. And the signal I'm using is 400 hertz modulated at 30%. And now we adjust this tuning capacitor right here does help when you change the signal source to be the correct one. 40 kilohertz. Roll this back up to 1600. 1600 kilohertz. There's our signal. Back 
down to 504 or 540. Oops, frequency 540 kilohertz. Okay, so this is this is doing the dial accuracy. Okay, we got to do 600 kilohertz and 1400 kilohertz, but it's L251. So it is this one and it says L251 and CT251. So that's CT251. L251 is the antenna. How do I tune that? All right, let me figure that out. Okay, there's a slug in the antenna itself to tune for L251, so that's fine. So what we need is 600 kilohertz, and I will need a different tuning tool. Yep. Seeing peaks to about eight, so 800 millihertz, or millivolts, millihertz. All right, and then 1400. And that is this capacitor right here. There we go. Let's check 600 again. Wind this back. You guys can actually see the tuning capacitor right here as I'm adjusting the dial. The tuning capacitor is moving, which is adjusting all the uh, oscillators. And there you go. So there's 600. Oops. 600 kilohertz. There we go, we're seeing eight. Cool. Roll this back to 16 kilohertz. Ooh, that's better. Even. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I've got the uh, signal source hooked up directly to the antenna jacks, and I'm running a two microvolt signal in with one kilohertz FM modulation at 75 kilohertz is what it asked for. And I need to tune T101 for maximum noise. T101 is right here, so actually that's back here. Mm, looks like we're good there. And the VTVM, or the Keithley and the scope are hooked up to the output jacks, which is what all this is tuned to. Yeah, that's about maximum noise right there. Okay. 88 megahertz. Two microvolts. Now we want L104. L104 is this coil right here. And has a very fine Phillips screwdriver, so I'm going to 
use a ceramic. Right there, we're hitting three. Perfect. Okay. Now I need 108 megahertz. And we need to roll this up to 108. And we need TC103, which is the capacitor in the back of the shielded can. That's going to be a flathead. Seriously, I cannot get, I can't get on the adjustment. Oh, there it is. Ooh. There we go. Give it a little bit more. I saw 500 millivolts. Good, strong signal. Little bit too far. These are very... There we go, perfect. All right, lots of signal. Now I need to adjust 90 and 106. And that is these two coils. And these two capacitors. So these two coils for 90, these two caps for 106. And I will need yet a different tuning tool because these are hex slug tune coils. 90 megahertz. And I'm still at two microvolts. This is why I needed the HP uh, to do this is because I needed the two microvolt signal. None of my other function generators go that low. L102, L103. Okay. 106. Three nine, that's good. Three hundred millivolts. Um, go back to ninety. Ninety megahertz. Good, strong signal now. Okay, now I need to adjust T201 for T201A for color change display.
So what happens is when you detune, when you're right on frequency, the display adjusts to help you with tuning. Okay, and I have the distortion meters hooked up and we need to, to the output, at nine, 98 megahertz, we tune T201B for lowest distortion. Okay, well, we got some sensitivity back. Let's see. We need to adjust VR501. right here for one to two lights of display at 5.6 microvolt, which we're at, so. There we go. Let's see, zero dBF. It does not, so we need to back this down a little bit more. There we go. Zero dBF, the two lights should go out. It does now. And at 21 dBF, we should just be getting a two, two lighting up a little bit, which we are. There we go. Now we need to adjust VR202, no, sorry, 201 here for the dial change. So 201, there we go, right there, perfect. Okay, I need to adjust VR3, uh, VR301 now, so I have the frequency counter hooked up with the scope probe right here. I'm looking for a frequency of 75.95 plus minus 40. We're at 70. That needs to loosen up a bit. Seventy five point nine nine. There we go. And in talking with the guys online, the best way to do the stereo adjustment, since I don't have a signal source, is to actually put a stereo signal through, a very strong stereo signal through it, and just do the adjustment um, to whatever, to what sounds the best. So I'll get that set up and I'll get that done. But obviously for licensing reasons, I can't put that online. So this concludes the, for right now, alignment. I'll bring you guys back when I finish up. And... There we go. Okay, I've got the tuner all set. I was listening to it for a while. Everything looks good. So here's what we're going to do. As we roll up the band, you guys will see. Let's see, it's on FM. FM muting is on. I have the power amp turned off so you won't hear anything. But as you roll up the band, keep an eye on the signal strength and the stereo light. Another station and stereos on. And another station. Another station. I'm really not a fan of this dial um, for doing an alignment because it's kind of a pain because it doesn't tell you an 
other one. So fantastic. So the reason I don't like the dial is there's not really a spot for um, where the actual stations are. It's got a 0 to 100% of the capacitor tuning, but then it's got just numbers. So it doesn't tell you, like, it doesn't tell you, is that 100? Is that 100? Is that 100? It doesn't tell you, here's 100. Well, there's a station. Um, the way the dial on this one works is, or the way the dial lights on this one work is when you're on station, it goes green to let you know you're there. And then if, you're, if you have a really strong signal, you'll get stereo FM. And then if you push the FM muting... Uh, if you're not on station, you won't hear the fuzz while you're tuning around the dial. And then this is just a signal strength meter. So, yeah. Uh, nice and sensitive. Lots of noise. Not picking up a lot of AM at the moment. Uh, but it it, uh, it tuned up real nice. But you can see, let me go to a station here real quick. Like there's stereo FM. Here's how selective it is. Just watch how watch how far the needle moves. I'll zoom in. We're on station now. Just that fast, it detunes. Now it's saying you're not you're not on frequency. Now you're on frequency. So, yeah, works real well. Cleaned up real nice. Looking forward to uh, getting this one back to my parents. Thanks for stopping by the lab, taking a look at the Harman Kardon HK710, doing the repair and the alignment on this one. Uh, I did not have to change any of the capacitors in this one. They all looked okay, and I did some voltage measurements in the power supply, and the capacitors were being run at half of their rated voltage. So even though this is an old unit, the caps aren't stressed in there. There's plenty of airflow and things like that. So this one's set again for a long long haul. The dial lights did need to be replaced, and this did need an alignment. Uh, some of the resistors and things drifted over time. Looking forward to getting this one back to uh, its rightful owner, but thanks for swinging by, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.